Please stand for the first hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson from 2 Samuel, a reading from the book of Samuel. In the spring of the year, time when kings go out to battle, David sent Jacob with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported this is Bathsheba, daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, May Uriah the Hittite, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him a present from the king. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to the house. When they told David, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, you have just come from a journey. Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah remain in booths, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day. On the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening, he went out to lie on his couch with his servants and his lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Job and sent it to the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him, so that he may be struck down and die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. No, not one. They know knowledge, all of these evildoers, eat of my people like bread, and do not call upon the Lord. See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortune of his people, Jacob will rejoice, and Israel be glad.
Dalla lettera di Paolo ai Efesini. Piego le ginocchia davanti al Padre, dal quale ogni famiglia nei cieli e sulla terra prende nome, affinché Egli vi dia, secondo le ricchezze della Sua gloria, di essere potentemente fortificati, mediante lo Spirito Suo, nell'uomo interiore, e faccia sì che Cristo abiti per mezzo della fede nei vostri cuori, perché, radicati e fondati nell'amore, siate resi capaci di abbracciare con tutti i santi quale sia la larghezza, la lunghezza, l'altezza e la profondità dell'amore di Cristo, e di conoscere questo amore che sorpassa ogni conoscenza, affinché siate ricolmi di tutta la pienezza di Dio. Ora, colui che può, mediante la potenza che opera in noi, fare infinitamente di più di quel che domandiamo o pensiamo, a Lui sia la gloria nella Chiesa e in Cristo Gesù, per tutte le età, nei secoli dei secoli. Amen. Parola del Signore. Il Santo Vangelo del nostro Signore Gesù Cristo secondo Giovanni. Gloria a te, Cristo Signore. Gesù se ne andò all'altra riva del mare di Galilea, cioè il mare di Tiberiade. Una grande folla lo seguiva perché vedeva i segni che egli faceva sugli infermi. Ma Gesù salì sul monte e là si pose a sedere con i suoi discepoli. Or la Pasqua, la festa dei Giudei, era vicina. Gesù dunque, alzati gli occhi e vedendo che una grande folla veniva verso di lui, disse a Filippo, «Dove compreremo del pane perché questa gente abbia da mangiare?» Diceva così, per metterlo alla prova, perché sapeva bene quello che stava per fare. 
Filippo gli rispose, 200 denari di pane non bastano perché ciascuno di loro ne riceva un pezzetto. Uno dei suoi discepoli, Andrea, fratello di Simone Pietro, gli disse, c'è qui un ragazzo che ha cinque pani ed orso e due pesci, ma che cosa sono per così tanta gente? Gesù disse, fatile sedere, c'era molta erba in quel luogo, la gente dunque si sedette ed erano circa 5.000 uomini. Gesù quindi prese i pani e dopo aver reso grazie li distribuì ai discepoli e i discepoli alla gente seduta. Lo stesso fece dei pesci quanti ne volero. Quando furono saziati disse ai suoi discepoli raccogliete i pezzi avanzati perché niente si perda. Essi quindi li raccolsero e riempirono dodici ceste con i pezzi dei cinque panni d'orso che erano avanzati a quelli che avevano mangiato. La gente dunque, avendo visto il segno che Gesù aveva fatto, disse «Questi è, certo, il profeta che deve venire nel mondo». Gesù quindi, sapendo che stavano per venire a rapirlo per farlo re, si ritirò di nuovo sul monte da solo. Quando fu sera, i suoi discepoli scesero al mare e montati in una barca si dissero all'altra riva verso Capernaum. Era già buio e Gesù non era ancora venuto presso di loro. Il mare era agitato perché tirava un forte vento. Come ebbero remato per cinque, circa 25 o 30 stadi, videro Gesù camminare sul mare e accostarsi alla barca ed ebbero paura. Ma egli disse loro, sono io, non temete. Essi dunque lo volero prendere nella barca e subito la barca toccò terra, là dove erano diretti. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test himself, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat 
reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. The most amazing thing happened yesterday. Let me tell you about it. Early yesterday morning, I was at home helping my parents. My father is a fisherman here on the north end of the Sea of Galilee. It is a really abundant area with lots of fish, especially here between Capernaum and Bethsaida, a few miles to the east. Fishermen do very well here, many times catching more than they can haul in. You know the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias? Well, it's not really a sea. I don't know why they call it that. It's actually a freshwater lake, and it's not that large. Only 13 miles long and eight miles wide at the widest point. Actually, sometimes they also call it the Lake of Gennesaret, named for that town on the northwestern shore. But mostly, they call it the Sea of Galilee, which is the region we are in. It's a good area, home here. There are lots of fishermen from all the villages around. Many of them come to Capernaum to sell their catch, as it has become such a prominent town. You know, it's on the road to Antipas. It used to be a sleepy village, but the Roman trade routes crossed through there, and it really has become a busy center, trading all kinds of meat and spices and, yes, fish. Anyway, day before yesterday, I had helped my father salt and dry some fish. You know, that's the best way to keep fish from spoiling. It can get pretty warm here, even in the springtime. So we eat fish from today's catch, then use salt dried from the seabed. We call it sea salt, but I'm not sure there's another kind. So we use the salt to cure and then air dry the fish. It works pretty well, but it takes some time. Sometimes we have a lot of fish hanging out on the rack for several days. So my dad and I had prepared the fish the day before, and yesterday I was up early in the morning helping my mother prepare the barley loaves. I really wanted wheat loaves for a change, but my mother reminded me that we are poor people and all we can afford is barley loaves. Wheat loaves are for the rich, she says. Ah, oh, but I remember the couple of times I've had wheat loaves, very delicate, light and tasty. Anyway, we are poor, so it's the barley loaves. So mother had ground the meal between our two millstones the day before. Then late in the evening, she had kneaded it in the large stone trough that we have. She had some especially fresh yeast, and overnight it rose really well into those round loaves. We call one a round of bread. Obviously, when Passover comes next week, we won't put the yeast in. The Torah says we can't have leavened bread at that time. Anyway, mother had some strong millet and particularly good barley yeast. Oh yeah, she added some cumin and some cinnamon, along with a bit of honey that I had found in a hollowed out tree. I helped mother bake the bread in our stone oven. She puts it directly on the embers so it gets a good crust and it looks nice and cooks slowly. So after the bread was ready, I set off on my way to Capernaum to visit my cousins there. As it can be so hot and there is really nowhere to get anything to eat, it's important to carry what you need for the day with you. 
Fortunately, as there are several sweet water springs on the way, I didn't have to carry water. So I had my two fish as the meal for the day and five rounds or loaves of barley bread. I really didn't need that many, but my mother suggested I take three extra for my cousins since she had made it special with the cumin and the honey. You know, bread is the main thing we eat. We treat it with respect, as the Torah tells us. Never put meat on top of a loaf, never set a pitcher of water on it, never put a hot plate next to it. That's all in the law of the Torah. Holy Scripture says we are to treat bread with respect. So here's the scene. I'm walking along, and I see lots of people, really a large crowd gathering, and I start asking, what is going on? Is there an insurrection? Are the Romans being mean again? And people tell me that this prophet from Nazareth is nearby, and people have been coming to him for healing. I had heard that just a few days ago, a few days earlier in Capernaum, healed, he had healed a paralytic that was lowered down through the roof. Apparently, the guy got up and walked away. There have been a lot of stories about this guy working and teaching in the neighborhood. Everyone seems to just love him. They say he's at home in Capernaum. He's apparently been teaching on the western shore of Galilee and the hills of Lower Galilee. It's only about 20 miles from Nazareth where he was born, but that's a lot of walking. So I'm getting pretty excited that I might get to see this prophet Jesus that everyone is talking about. I come over the crest of the hill, I look down, and I see a small group of guys talking, about a dozen of them, and pretty quickly the crowd engulfs them, and then I'm swept away into the fray as well. Now we're on a large, gently sloping hillside that goes down to the seashore. There's some gently rolling hills there, but mostly it kind of looks like a natural amphitheater. The sea is calm, and you can see the hills of the Golan to the left. That Golan area, those hills, they're almost a bluff. They have a lot of height. But we are on this lovely hillside, and I get pushed into the middle of the crowd and find myself right next to this guy, Jesus. I'm hanging on to my fishes and my loaves, and he seems to be chiding his buddies about getting some food to feed the big crowd. One guy they call Philip replies they would need a month's wages to feed such a crowd. Then this other guy, Andrew, sees me and comes over and asks if he may have my two fish and five heavy barley loaves. Then the famous prophet Jesus takes over. He seems so nice. It's pretty amazing. The crowd is quite chaotic and he commands all of us to sit down, which is good because I'm short and can't see over the crowd. So we sit down, women and children separated from the men as always. Everyone gets quiet and still, and I hand him the loaves and the fish. I really wish that I had something more to offer, like cucumbers or onions or lentils, like we would have for a nice meal. But all I have is the basics, bread and fish. But I remember the teachings I've always been taught and heard from my family that bread and fish are basics and you can live on those alone. So Jesus, being the prophet and teacher that he is, respects our custom that food is a holy thing and to be honored and begins to pray with his arms up. That is our traditional Jewish way of praying. You know, he might have just fed us at being out in the open all but he's probably remembering what the rabbis teach us. A meal without prayer is a meal accursed. Then he starts breaking the bread. You know the law says that bread is to be broken, not cut. He probably didn't have a knife anyway. We sitting on the ground are snickering that only the first few are going to get anything to eat. But incredibly, he, he keeps breaking the bread and breaking the bread and breaking the bread. And Peter is handing out pieces of fish, and they just go on and on and on. There must be 5,000 people here, and we all get something, actually enough. And now we're done with the meal, and Jesus says, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. You know, we are forbidden to throw away any food. Torah says that any crumbs as large as an olive are to be gathered up. 
So I and some of the other boys start gathering up the crumbs, and we wind up with 12 baskets full. We set one of the baskets at the foot of each of his disciples. You know, the way Jesus does multiplication, he probably could have fed each of the 12 tribes of Israel with each of those baskets. So that's what happened. And you know, I've been trying to figure out what that was all about. But maybe that's the message. He took five loaves and two fish and fed about 5,000 people. Yet there were still 12 baskets left over. Food for everybody from Jesus. You know, it was a good meal and satisfying. We didn't have melons or figs or pomegranates or dates as a Swede at the end of the meal like we usually do. But for some reason, we didn't need them. We were satisfied. How much do we really need? Jesus made it seem pretty simple. Oh yeah, there's one other thing about that day. The crowds pressed in on him afterwards as, as it was getting dark, he slipped away. Where is he? Where did he go? What happened, we were saying? Then there was a strong western wind that started blowing and the sea got really rough and a big storm came up. His disciples had already set off for Capernaum to the west, apparently without him. But the winds were blowing against them. No way to row into that oncoming gale. We were concerned about them. And so this morning, I slept under a rocky crag out of the storm. This morning, I met a boy just coming back from Capernaum. He had walked most of the night, and he told me that the boat with 12 guys and the prophet had arrived shortly after sunset, just after the storm settled down, and that they went and stayed at Peter's house. I was worried that they must have drowned. They must have been rowing really hard. No, wait a minute, that's, that's impossible. You can't row that hard again in a storm. Impossible. Well, feeding 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes is impossible. And making a paralytic walk is impossible, or maybe it isn't. This is Jesus. What a guy. I suspect this story will be told for a very long time. This Jesus, so calm and pleasant and peaceful. There was something incredible, amazing, mysterious, and tranquil about being near him. There was a presence. Being around him, there was a peace that I just don't understand. Great guy. I hope you get to meet him. It might make a really big difference in your life. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from tr light, true God from true God, be not and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world.
yearn for the fullness of God, that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. We thank you for the gift of life and for our connection with all that you have made. And we delight in your creation and protect it. Heal us with the fullness of God. Amen, Lord. Ti ringraziamo per i leader creativi e compassionevoli in tutto il mondo. Si dedichino alla giustizia, alla pace e al bene comune. Amen, Signore. Ascolta la nostra preghiera. We thank you for the endless and beautiful diversity of humanity. May we recognize and celebrate your image in every person we meet. Amen, Lord. Your prayer. Ti ringraziamo per la promessa della tua presenza nella nostra vita. Possa la nostra preoccupazione per coloro che tra noi soffrono portarci alla preghiera e che la nostra cura per loro sia un balsamo curativo. Amen, Signore. Ascolta la nostra preghiera. We thank you for the gift of new life in this world and the hope of new ever and everlasting life in the world to come. May those who have gone before us overflow with the fullness of your never-ending love and light. Amen, Lord. Preghiamo per la transizione. Concedici uno spirito di fede e coraggio affinché possiamo avere la forza di affrontare i giorni a venire con fermezza e pazienza. Guarda con benevolenza questa famiglia parrocchiale e manda il tuo spirito per guidare il comitato di ricerca, il consiglio parrocchiale e l'intera comunità di San Paolo entro le mura ad essere di un solo cuore e di una sola mente, affinché possiamo ricevere un pastore fedele che si, cura, si prenderà cura di del tuo popolo e prepararci per il nostro ministero a Roma. Signore, Amen. Ascolta We pray for those who are now in your everlasting kingdom, O oh Father. May they see your light and feel your love, and may those who miss your presence in this life be, may be consoled. Today we pray especially for Roberto. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen, Lord. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, who alone stills the hearts of your creatures, your children on this earth, we pray for peace in the world, particularly those troubled spots, especially this day in Lebanon and Israel, that peace may come to that troubled portion of land where Jesus walked. We pray also for the important elections in Venezuela this day, that prosperity, joy, and peace may come to the world and division may cease in the name of Christ our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. O God, who would fold both heaven and earth in a single piece, let the Zion of thy great love redeem the waste of our wraths and sorrows, and give peace to thy church, peace among nations, peace in our dwellings, and peace in our hearts, through thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that holy city, for with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another with a sign of peace.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say in our own languages, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let's keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in, remember that, in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Benediciamo il Signore. Rendiamo grazie a Dio. Thanks be to God. Good Sunday.